So we're still in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're looking at the advice that Paul gives the church there on how they can live lives that are pleasing to God. And as we saw last time, he says to them, watch your sex life. And then he's got two other things that he highlights as examples of how we can live to please God. The first is this, to love one another. Now that is no big surprise. He's talked about it already in the letter. Here's what he says this time, reading from verse 9. Now about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all the brothers and sisters throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, dear friends, to do so more and more. Now because this is something that Paul comes back to again and again, we're not going to dwell on this for very long at all this morning. Uh, the Thessalonians have been described as a model church and they've com been commended for the love that they have for one another and they're simply instructed to do so more and more. You may remember back in chapter 3 Paul uh, is praying for the church not very long earlier before this actually in verse 12 onwards. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you. And that's a good prayer for us to be praying, isn't it? And notice that there's a contrast here between the lust that we saw in the verses we looked at last time and the love that we're to display as evidenced by these verses. And that's all I'm going to say about that second thing. But we are to love one another. And then thirdly, this is an unusual one. We're to live a quiet life. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. This is perhaps unexpected. Paul says, have an ambition, and this is to be your ambition. Lead a quiet life. None of us really said that, did we, when we were asked at school, what do you want to be when you're older? What's your ambition? I want to live a quiet life. I'm not quite sure what the careers teacher would have made of such a statement. But what he's saying here is mind your own business, don't stick your nose in, don't be a gossip, ignore the tittle-tattle, don't be a busybody, avoid juicy gossip. Well, I hope other people are listening to this because, you know, they need to hear it. Me, I don't gossip, I'm, I'm, I'm just quite inquisitive, I suppose. Well, Paul warns us, all of us, cut it out. Instead, aim for a quiet life. It's a common problem in all communities, isn't it? This business of sticking your nose into other people's business and being a gossip. And Paul has to warn what is a model church about it. So we shouldn't feel too surprised if this is something that we need to think about ourselves as well. The Lord's church should never be a place for gossip and if you find yourself telling somebody this week over coffee or on social media well you never guess what the pastor was talking about I think he was talking about us then you may have more of a problem in this area than you realize and by the way I'm not accusing you of anything um, it's a case that the model church needs warning about gossip and it would be arrogant of us wouldn't it to think that we don't need this warning too it's not nice to be on the end of gossip, so why do it to other people? Jesus says something so pertinent in this whole thing in Matthew's Gospel. Let me read some verses to you. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you've won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or tax collector. How much better if we were to follow this, and yet all too often we have a tendency to do this backwards. We might start by shunning that person and having nothing more to do with them because they've hurt me, or because they said this, or that's at least what you've heard. Uh, or we instead do the, the next, um, the next uh, the penultimate thing in the list, if you like, that we tell everyone in the church, but we don't tell the person concerned. 
and as a result there could be no resolution. You just moan instead to somebody else or everybody else. And that is just so corrosive, isn't it? It only spreads negativity and gossip around the church. I remember asking someone in a church that I was a part of um, what was going on about uh, a friend, a mutual friend. I said, we haven't seen him for quite a while. Is he all right? And this was in the context of a team meeting in the leadership. And the group I was with just looked at me surprised and said, well, he's still upset about what you said to him, Steve. Something, by the way, I'm surprised doesn't happen more often. The thing is, I didn't know what it was I'd said to him. I didn't remember any great falling out. I'd obviously said something that hurt him. I didn't know what it was and I didn't know what he was upset about. And yet the three people I was talking to did. Now it's hard, isn't it, to work towards forgiveness and resolution if you don't even know there's an issue. So as Paul says, we're to mind our own business. Instead, here's a positive alternative. Instead of making other people's business your own, work every day and live the kind of life that wins the respect of outsiders. Then people outside the church won't equate you with gossip, but with hard work. And the way that you live out your life will be a good statement a good advertisement for your faith so three things there that Paul says we can do in order to please God it's not an exclusive list but three really good examples the first of which is watch your sex life the second of which is love one another and then finally we're instructed to lead a good life hard things to do let's pray Father, thank you for the warnings that you give us in the scriptures. Thank you for the examples that we are to follow. We know we can't do these in our own strength. We need your help. There are times when we uh, get our sex lives all wrong and we need to be forgiven for those. We, there are times that we find it hard to love one another. And particularly, I guess, when we're seeing more of each other than we would uh, if we're all locked down together or isolated in some way and also Lord this this countercultural instruction you give us to lead a quiet life may we make it our business to be helpful and a blessing to one another but not to stick our noses in uh, where it's not wanted and certainly not to be gossiping about others some of these things are really tempting some more tempting than others on this list for each of us but I pray Lord that you'd help us to resist those things and to live a better way. In your name we pray. Amen.